millennials, like myself, are likely never going to succeed in this economy. My name is Samuel Ronan, and I hope to be your president one day. And as bleak and straightforward as that opening statement was, it's true. Millennials control less than 4% of all wealth in the country. And of that 4%, Mark Zuckerberg himself, just one millennial, controls 3% of that. So of the 4% of the, the national wealth that is in existence, all millennials, one of the largest generations of our time in existence who are alive, who are actively engaged in the economy, who are actively engaged in the workforce, all of us comprise only of 4% of total assets in America, of total wealth in America. And of that total wealth, Mark Zuckerberg alone controls 3% of it. That is not prosperity. That's not a thriving economy. That is certainly not a way for the next generation to move ahead. And it, and it is a direct contribution to why millennials don't own homes, why we're not having children, why we can't afford vacations, why a lot of these industries have fallen to the wayside because those were luxury things. Those were luxury industries. And when I say luxury, you, you mostly come to mind of like, well, okay, yeah, a Porsche, that's a luxury. A Rolex, yeah, absolutely, that's, that's a luxury. You know, diamond everything, you know, that's, that's clearly luxury. No, no, no. Anything that isn't necessary to sustain life is a luxury. And to the degree that even certain foods can be considered luxuries, right? Like you don't need caviar. <laughs> you don't need filet mignon. Hell, you don't need steak. Uh, I think you can live off of potato alone, right? Potato and butter. So really, luxury can be a very broad definition. But quality of life, right? We millennials, and of course Gen Z, are struggling just to maintain quality of life, right? Just the minimum of just being able to have a roof over our heads and food in our bellies and clothes on our shoulders. And a way to get to work, apparently. So, why is this? Well, let's go back into the Reagan administration and trickle-down economics. In fact, let's go back a little bit further. Post-World War II, everybody came back, they started families, they had children, and they wanted to make sure that their kids never struggled again because isn't that what every parent wants? Except those children still dealt with the psychological traumas of the times, right? The racism, the you can't be gay, the you can't have feelings, and mental health is taboo, right? So you had all this. You had a thriving economy that was built on the backs of union workers. And then that generation became in charge. And they closed the door behind them. They elected Reagan. He invented trickle-down economics, which has never once been actually apl uh, applied. And from there, boomers have maintained an iron fist of control over our economy, our government, our politics, everything. To the point where even Gen X doesn't even have that much sway in our economy. I believe their control is uh, roughly 20 or 30 percent. Which means Gen X, which has been around for a minute, um, controls less than half of all assets that the boomers control. Which means boomers do indeed, in fact, control over half of the economy, of all wealth in this country. And once they die... Unless that goes to their Gen X family, then that's, 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 that's it. And we're seeing the hoarding of wealth being played out to even greater extremes in modern economy, right? In the modern day economy, right? The cost of living keeps going up, cost of food goes up, gas keeps going up, rent goes up, bills go up. Everything keeps increasing and our wages remain stagnant. Our rent goes up, our wages go stagnant. So we have to get another job. Another job that pays very little. Despite being the most educated generation of all time, we can't get those jobs that require those degrees. We were lied to. We were misled. We were literally manipulated. So what can we do about this? Well, for one, we can start electing millennials into office. But for two, we can start addressing these issues as actual issues. We can start acknowledging that this is happening, and we can start demanding that our elected leaders take this seriously and take action accordingly. 
especially since less than 1% of all legislation that passes at the federal, state, and local level has anything to do with public opinion. Let that sink in. Less than 1% of all legislation that is passed has anything to do with public opinion, needs, wants, what have you. All of it is corporate driven and who is in charge of corporations across the board for the most part, the boomer generation. Now, this isn't to do a war against boomers and to aid shame and all this, that, and the other. That is to put into perspective that there is a generation of people who can solve this problem intrinsically, but are not. And it is up to the rest of us to hold them accountable. We outnumber them, so we need to show up to the polls in those numbers to take back control of our lives, our futures, and our economy. And then, when we are all sharing a slice of the prosperity pie then we can live happily. See, the thing is, it's not like we're trying to take anything away from the boomers, right? We're not trying to take away their rights, their wealth, their values, their aspirations. We're trying to ensure that everybody else has access to it, that we can be a part of the process, that we can enjoy the fruits of our labor, that we can enjoy this prosperity that only exists for one generation and one echelon of that generation. So, if that interests you, and if you would like to learn more, Check out these videos next.